Hey, hey, don't tell nobody, but poop! <laughs> gotcha! Yes! Thanks! I won't forget this! Hi guys, uh, my name's Jufinder. I've become quite pop um, popular within my friends list for playing Meepo. And I myself feel like Meepo is a completely imbalanced hero, which everybody knows. Um, and although I have mastered him, uh, I feel quite confident that I can win almost any game with him. And I'm going to be showing you some gameplay footage and talk you through how I play him. The first thing you'd want to do before you even look in a game is click the settings tab in your top left. And as you can see here, I have got F1 for my main unit. I've got 1 for all units, 2 for all other units. And then here I've got 3 and 4 as my control groups along with 5 and 6. And that's because I use um, the normal QWEDFR and ZXC VBN. And I use my items on a gaming mouse with thumb buttons, which makes it very easy. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to play the Meepo game and I will talk you through it. So as you can see by this screen, um, they have counted, they have already counted Meepo because they've got um, AoE damage Whoa. with the Luna, which she can completely Taking shut out a Meepo. TA, she has, uh, she has the side blades, which is hey, great. Don't tell no but this and then you've the got Time for the uh, Alchemist, if you're huddled your Meepos together, which 9 times out of 10 in a fight will probably end up happening, um, his stun could completely shut you out. And other than that, I think the Wraith King and the Shadow Shaman are pretty pretty easy to kill. But let's have a look from my, my hero perspective. Um, suggested item build, I'd follow that. As long as you max out your Poof and your Earthbind first, maybe take one uh, value point in Geo Strike just for the added slows. Um, and obviously, level your ultimate at level 3, 10, and 17, and you will be fine. So, as you can see here, I'm body blocking the lane. I've let the range creep go through because I know that we've got, got a TA in the mid lane. So I want that hero to go down first so I can try and pull the creep wave towards me. Uh, this is mainly because Meepo needs to farm and he doesn't need to take damage at uh, level 1 because he's a very weak oh, hero at level 1. Yeah. So you want to look at pulling the creep wave towards you. As you can see the range creep is now gone. TA has come in and the creeps are very steadily farming. But her range creep is still active, so that's going to push my lane up to the tower. As you can also see, I'm right clicking the hero and then walking away to try and pull some aggro towards me, which then pulls my creeps towards my tower. Okay, look, so we've now got two creep waves, and I've got the ability to farm quicker now because I've got two creep waves to farm, and she's got one, which will very very slowly you pull the lane towards the tower and as you can see I'm still pulling the creep wave by right clicking the enemy hero and walking backwards towards my tower so this is the part if you see what I'm doing here when it comes to rune spawns you want to send your main meepo up the top for the rune just to try and get the rune out because most mid laners get a bottle but meepo doesn't need a, need a bottle because his mana pool is quite nice so you will see top rune is active you take your main meepo and take that rune and then you poof your first Meepo to your second Meepo. And then you take the bottom rune. And if you get contested like this, then you are quite happy to fight. See, their Wraith King's walking away quite low. I've, you can see here, I've ignored that Luna because she hasn't got Glaive yet, so she can't do anything. I've got reinforcements coming as well, so I've got Orange coming in from the back. Sniper's got the, um, the Wraith King, I'll give him some gold and I'll take the Luna. That's some uh, double kill there, and I've just bought my Tranquil Boots. I would always suggest starting with Tranquil Boots, because the Tranquil Boots will grant you so much health regen when you're out of lane. Uh, and that is good for if you do ganks, because the worst thing with Meepo is the fact that he's very squishy early. It's when he gets items that he becomes very powerful, or more Meepos once you get your Aghanim Scepter. <clears throat> Although Psyblades for, for uh, Templar Assassin can essentially counter Meepo in a way if you use it rightly. Um, Meepo can eat through her Q. She can't, the, the, the Q uh, blocks magic and basic attacks and Meepo will eat through that because it's very very low for a Meepo and I mean you know when you've got Aghanim's 5 Meepos you can take away her shield almost straight away. As you can see what I'm doing on the map is I've got my main Meepo w walking about and I've got my second Meepo blocking a camp. 
Now I'm going to pull this camp, go back to the main Meepo. I'll select both my Meepos, and then I'll probably pull them back up to the mid lane. Okay, oh the stat of the camps are stacked. Uh, stacked. I've just notified Doom that I've stacked the camp so he knows that I'm stacking. Then another creep lane is in. And then start farming the mid lane again. You want to try and stack the camps, that specific camp, or unless you've got someone to do it then you don't really need to. But you can stack that camp at the first camp I think is about 53 and then after that it's about 52 because the creeps will start uh, <clears throat> when they start building up it takes longer to come, pull out of a camp so it's probably best to do it about 52 to be safe. So as you can see, I'm rotating bottom for a possible gank, and I've sent my second Meepo to camp to uh, stack. So that Meepo is now stacking, while my main Meepo was checking the rune. I'm just going to return back to middle to try and stop the middle lane from being pushed out to the tower and take some farm, because TA is, is definitely not a hero you want to give farm to. You can see that camp is now stacked, my second Meepo is here, and I am poofing the mid lane to try and clear waves. Now, when you get three points in your poof with two Meepos, you can practically clear an entire creep lane with that one, with the two poofs. See, like I've just done there. But when you get three Meepos and you do that, you'll most definitely clear a lane. So the best thing to do now is, although I'm sending a Meepo to go back and my main Meepo to roam, I am going to send my second Meepo back to that camp for the stack. Missing and I'm going to send my main Meepo up to the top rune so that I can collect the rune. Okay, so see here, 52, and then I pull the camp out. If you notice, it takes a very long time, as you can see there, for them to come out. And the lane, the camp is now stacked, and I can start roaming again with my Meepos. Missing meadow. Another thing to note as well is, do not be afraid to send one Meepo, or many Meepos, down to the pool for regen. Because of your Meepo presence, for example, if you have three Meepos, you can send one Meepo back to the pool, put one Meepo, um, to the pool, poof it back to the lane you're in, poof the other Meepo back from the lane to the pool, and then poof them all into the main. You've just regened every single Meepo and no, you haven't left the lane, so there's no lane presence. And if you're farming creeps, that still gives you experience and gold. So it's almost that time, but I think I've missed the stack at this point because I was too busy farming creeps. So double poof the mid lane, clear the wave. She'll give me a bit of harassment, but then you just fall back. Send a main Meepo back to the pool and then select the second Meepo to start going around. As you can see, 7 minutes and 30 seconds, poof the main Meepo, and I've just bought my first item for my Aghanim Scepter. And I get my Aghanim Scepter in this game by about 15 minutes and 30 seconds, which is fairly quick for a Meepo, and that's, if you can get it any quicker than that, then get it quicker, because you need that Aghanim Scepter as soon as you, as soon as you physically can. So I think this is about the time that I actually start to poof the entire camp. So, you know, double poof, they've taken quite a lot of damage with a level 4 poof. If you get, if you, you see, I've taken a lot of damage on that Meepo, you drag them out, double poof again, take that one cream, and I've just gone and got myself about 400, 500 gold from one camp, so that's got me even closer. So I'm almost halfway to an Aghanim's at 8 minutes and 50 seconds. As you can see here, the TA has completely left the lane because she can't farm. Which gives me the ability to AFK farm the mid lane every now and then, and then I also send my other Meepo back to stack the camps when I need to. Dyer's middle tower is under which has also granted me a free tower. And at nine minutes thirty, uh, nine minutes forty seconds, I am now halfway to my Aghanim scepter. I'm stacking the camp again with my second Meepo, sending my main Meepo up to the top room. I've changed my mind, and I'm going to go for the Luna. She pops her ultimate, simply walk up to the high ground. Wouldn't do much damage anyway, but walk up to the high ground. Get your tranquil boots active if you need to. If she comes in, make sure you've got your poof on cooldown, and then you can go back in and engage. See, I've taken one value point in Geo Strike, which will be very needed very shortly, and I'll show you why. So, as you can see, the Luna in the mid lane, she has decided to stay there. So, two points in the net, throw a net, she dares not to move, double poof. Okay, look, another one there, and she's running away. I'm not going to catch her. One hit, the Geo Strike, it melts her down and gets the kill. I might not have been attacking them with two Meepos, but that's the sort of thing that happens. You know, if you make the mistake with the Meepos of not but, um, using all Meepos to attack one target, the Geo Strike should mostly clear them off if they're very, very low. And as you can see, one Meepo is low. Send that one back to the pool. 
that what that camp is stacked just to verify and go back to the mid lane and farm. Alchemist is not much of a problem for Meepo if you're on your own because what that stun does not last very long for Meepo. And if it does, then you can just poof out as soon as it finishes. I've now got three Meepos. I'm level ten. You can now double poof or triple poof if you wish. Dyer has strengthened. You can now structures. start roaming with two Meepos and Dyer's bottom stack with one. As you can see right now, what I'm actually doing is setting my control groups because there was an error which has recently been fixed for Meepo. So I'm stuck in that camp, pull them all the way out. Wraith King's there, but I'm not going to initiate because he's got his ultimate at level 6. So I'm considering going into fight. I'm considering it, but he ends up running away and I'm not going to chase him because I will probably end up dying if he has passive regen. Or Dyer's passive lifestyle. Tower. So he's instead, I've now got three pieces of the Aghanim Scepter and one more to go so I'm just going to simply take this camp. I, I generally set most, maybe at the beginning, all of the Meepos on three and then one extra Meepo on four. That way it's very easy for me to control all of my Meepos. In the late game, uh, when I've got five Meepos, I will probably end up selecting three Meepos on one and two Meepos on the other so I can double jungle, which is very very effective. You can do that at four Meepos as well. Um, if you feel comfortable doing that, then go ahead, but it's not its not very needed unless you're very far behind, I don't think. Or if you want to get an amazed, a massive advantage. I'm just going to take this middle tower. It can't do much about it, to be fair. It's, it's a Meepo. You can't stop a Meepo from taking a tower. I'm going to triple poof this lane, take the camp, and go back. So I think this is the point where I clear out this entire camp for my Aghanim Scepter. As you can see, we are currently at the... We are currently at 13.38, so I've actually got a 14 minute Aghanim Scepter, or oh, well, not even that actually, about 13 and a half minute Aghanim Scepter, which is kind of the idea, this is kind of the Dyer's time you need the Aghanim Scepter, on top of things. because when you get the Aghanim Scepter you get four Meepos and all of your stats are shared between all of your Meepos, and that's what you want, because that's when you can start buying you know, all of your stat items, you can buy a Scardy, you can buy um, an Assault Curass, although an Assault Curass is good for Meepo, it grants Dyer's top tower it grants AoE armor, top. it grants a debuff to the enemy of armor, but it may be considerable to get an Ethereal Blade, because it, it grants, it's, it's, all the abilities it grants kill. is pure stats, so I mean, you get Agility, Brilliant Intelligence, and something attack. else, which I can't remember. I think it might actually be Strength, I'm not too sure. But you get granted them, but also your poof is magical damage. Is so really when you cast that with Ethereal Blade, one, the enemy cannot attack, and two, your poof will do so much damage, it is unreal. You'll probably end up getting about 1400 um, damage before uh, modifiers. So, you know, just keep that in mind. You know, stack the camp again, use my other Meepos to roam about. It's very important that you stack the camps because you spend a lot of time out of lane as Meepo when you're roaming, and if you do that, you'll very well, you'll very much, you know, get ahead of the game. So I've taken the mid tower. They've my allies have taken the top tower. It's now time to work on the bottom uh, tower. You can see I've still got one Meepo roaming, go to go back towards the uh, camp that I've been stacking. We've got Race King coming in, so yeah, you know, fall back. That you don't need to be out of position. That he might have recruits, so let's just fall back. They've denied the top, the bottom tower. You know, so we're ahead on towers really, uh, and gold. You know, stack that camp. There we go. And then go back to selecting the other Meepos once you've pulled that Meepo out like that. TA's coming in. You know, be very wary. Never initiate on a me uh, with Meepo unless you physically know you can initiate. If you see on the map, I couldn't see that because I had no vision, but I knew the Wraith King was there. I did not know Luna was there, and I knew that TA was there. So it's what best to, you know, pull back, don't don't fight, because you don't want to lose the gold that you're currently earning from stacking that camp. It's a double stack, but you never know. I, you know, just take it anyway. It brings you that little bit closer to a Blink Dagger. Blink Dagger is normally the second item you should get, but if not, then a mechanism. So we initiate on this fight, but because I've got no vision, I get the TA, but then I die to the Wraith King, so that camp that I've just farmed would be completely pointless if I didn't get a single kill. But luckily enough, I do have allies that have come in for the fight. You know, they've cleaned up, we've just killed three from for one, which is Meepo. And Meepo is, you know, Meepo is not an important kill. reason for that is because he can farm, there is no need 
the Meepo to be killed essentially because he can just forever farm. And the L gold that you lose, you can build straight back up in no time at all. Okay, so it's 17 minutes in. I am very close to my to my blink dagger. I'm gonna make my way through the jungle. Someone's pinged out the end the alchemist, so I'm gonna start roaming with all of my Meepos. I ask him to stun. Luckily enough, TA is there for me, so it stuns continuously. I get one one net off, one other net, double, triple, quadruple, and I get the and sniper takes the kill. Granted, but I get the kill. Sniper would have allowed me to take that kill, then it would have been an easy kill for me, and it would have been a blink dagger. I make the mistake of initiating here. I believe I die, but I do take the Wraith King with me. Oh, oh, I'll pop his ultimate, but I'm slowed for so much that I'm away. I just about get away, but the stun kicks in, and that's that. So I've just respawned from dying to the Wraith King in the team fight that happened underneath the uh, middle second tower. I could buy a TP, but I decided to walk just to save that value gold. You know, I've noticed that I can't survive very well, so instead of going Link, I've decided to take a mechanism as I'm almost there. And it comes in parts, so I can buy the the parts for a mechanism. You know, Luna's be our position, no one stayed with her. Easy kill. See, now I have enough for a mechanism. It's very much worth buying a mechanism if you've got supports that won't buy one. Because although it's good for your entire team, Meepo can also use the mechanism on his entire group. Which means that you can go rogue, you can just fight, you can just solo anything, you can go for whatever you want. And as long as you've got the mech, the mech there, you can 9 times out of 10 survive. So look, the net's caught him out. That's 2 kills to the team. Trying to net, but she's very, she's too fast. She's got face boots, she's gonna run away. I keep chasing, I keep chasing, but I haven't got that mech yet. The Cory is still bringing it in. No, I can't get her. So, you know, accept it, go back. Never chase as Meepo, unless you feel very confident that you have a chance of surviving. The mech's here. So now I start making my way back, and I put an, a Vladimir's offering into my inventory, into my quick purchase slot to aid the Doom uh, Sniper well the and moment. the Dragon Knight. Now it's great for a Vladimir because it stacks with all of your Meepos. It doesn't interrupt with Geo Strike because Geo Strike is not a unique Gaius attack modifier, and even if it was, attack. it would still stack. Um, and it's just an overall good item. For everything, it grants additional armor, it grants additional aura mana regen, it grants lifesteal regen, it's good. It's a good item in general. But it's very, very situational, so I wouldn't get it unless you really needed it. Okay, you can see here Shadow Shame is out of position. And this is what I was talking about earlier with the mechanism. As you can see, the Meepos are getting quite. They've taken a lot of damage, there's that one that's taking damage. Use the mechanism, they're all almost at full health. Ex you know, that's the mechanism. It's very, it's, there's a lot of value in a mechanism when it comes to Meepo because, you know, you get more survivability, more armor, and you get to stay in team fights for a lot longer. If you need to send a Meepo to the secret shop, or to the shop in general, or the pool, then it's probably worth sending your um, Meepo clones to Blink Poof, the camps in the jungle. So you can get, you know, extra farm while you're walking about. Because you get to collect your items, you can put your main Meepo back, and you can get extra farm. You can see that they're using as much as they can to kill. Luna's used her ultimate for that kill. Although it might have been a good idea, it is no longer a good idea because they have no they have no war vision, so Meepo is completely undetected. And off the back of that, I'm now dominating and we have a double kill. Alchemist is farming. Our supports have put a good ward in the jungle for us to see that camp. That's one net, two net, double poof. Get the poofs in. There you go. That's another one. Double kill, and I'm now mega on a mega kill streak. And now I've got the blink dagger. I've bought it, but as you can see, I've reconsidered it because I can send one main meepo. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. I might need the buyback, so it's it's always worth saving buyback when it comes to your heroes and your uh, games. Always save the buyback just in case, because if you die with no buyback, it could change the game completely and end up to you losing. So as you can see, I've split the meepos up. I've sent my main meepo away, and I've selected all the meepos. The reason why I selected all of them is because I can hear that um, alchemist stun hitting, and that's it. We're now fighting. But as you can see, Peter Blink Poof, uh, Poof for the double kill. But e let them, let your team kill the uh, 
Wraith King. And then keep hitting those wards, because those wards will cause a problem. Unfortunately, we lost two, but they lost four, so we're okay on that bar. Take the top tower, and like I said before, we saved that value gold from the, uh, done for. from the blink dagger. So, what we can do now is we can either buy, say, a heart, an ethereal blade. We can, there's a lot of items we can buy with that 4.3k gold, but instead, I'm going to stick with the blink dagger and send my Meepo clones to take out the top tower. The next item I am working on is a sheep stick. The sheep stick is very good because if there's any heroes that counter Meepo, uh, say like a warlock or an axe, then you can, if you survive at all at the end of their abilities or beforehand, you can use your sheep stick on them. You can then poof completely all of your Meepos into that area and you can go and get yourself a kill off the hero that counters you. And it's very, very important to get that. And the reason why I'm getting the sheep stick is to try and counter the Luna and the Alchemist. Because if I get stunned out by them, I or Luna use her ult, I am dead, basically. I can see that there's a fight going on to my left, on the left hand side of the Roshan pit. So what I'm going to do is blink my main Meepo in, because I'm pretty sure that my team is okay, blink all of the other Meepos into the camp, and start hitting Roshan. They have no detection, they have no idea that I've just got into the Roshan pit, and it's the best way to do Roshan. Never walk into Roshan through the entrance with Meepo or anybody that you want the uh, Aegis with. Because if you do that, and they see you, whether you know they've got uh, detection or not, it is just going to be the worst thing. Because they can then 5-man you, initiate on you, and if you've got no backup, then you're most definitely going to die and give away the Aegis and the extra 200 gold that you get from Roshan. So, I've cleared out the middle wave, I've gone towards the bottom lane, and I can see the race King coming in, but I can't see Alchemist. Now I can see the Alchemist. I blink both all of the Wraith King, uh, Wraith King, get rid of his ultimate, and now start hitting the Wraith King again. Blink the Wraith King again. See, I'm getting very low on Meepo, so I mechanism, but it doesn't work. But then the Aegis is there to pop, so the Aegis pops. I then net. Kill the Shadow Shaman, I get fully stunned, but it's not long enough, so I net again. Body block, poof, triple kill, and now it's the Luna's turn to die and spend some time in the grave. Just, you know, blink forward, net, poof, 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 now you've got an ultra kill. You've killed everyone and none of them have buyback, so they can't do anything but let you farm their lanes. The top lane's being pushed out, everyone's at the bottom lane, Meepo's in the middle lane, there is nothing they can do even if they wanted to buy back. Send, I've sent my main Meepo to the secret shop, I've sent my secondary Meepo's to finish the middle lane. Now you've got that top tower, blink poof to get rid of all of the creeps. Okay. Now you've got the tower, you can start working on the on the, on the barracks. You know, they start to initiate, he's got no ultimate because he just used it, and he's dead. You can see they're scared now because they're sitting behind the barracks. If you can get a team to sit behind the barracks, you can win the game. We've taken all of the barracks, it's only 30 minutes into the game, I am 6 slotted. I'm going to get my sec my last item, which is sheep stick, just in case I turn it around. But you can use your secondary meepos to hit the tower. And as you can see, I am now just spam clicking the wards, get rid of the wards to stop the harass on the creeps, because they will harass the creeps. I missed one. Make sure if you against the shadow shaman, take out the wards with a mech and regen and life steal, you'll be fine. And then you finish the game. A uh, nice old 30 minutes and 35 seconds. And that, guys, is how I normally play Meepo. As you can see, I've got 1060 XPM, 725 GPM. The GPM could be a lot better, but it's still out farmed every single person on the map. And that's the sort of thing you want to look for when playing a Meepo. Please enjoy the tutorial. I, I know I made a few mistakes, and if there's any questions, then you're more than welcome to ask me or post a comment. Thank you, favorite, share, and like.